those of you not familiar with uh, a lot of the other videos I've done, um, I like to call them vlogs, like a video series, almost like a diary of, of sorts of my, of my progress as I study through this issue. Because you will notice even in my old videos that I progressed uh, through different views, you know, where I thought I was King James only at one point, but then I become kind of TR only. Um, and how I learned how to distinguish those things. And I thought about deleting those videos, but in reality, there's good stuff in all of them. Um, so I'll just leave them up. But if you have the question in your mind, like, what is he talking about? You know, John MacArthur and all these great, you know, theologians, they're all wrong and you're right. Who are you to say this? I mean, that's the kind of attitude that I think a lot of people have. And it's a good, I mean, in a sense, it's a good thing to say. It's like, if you're going against the grain of a lot of people, you better have a good reason. And well, in this video, as we continue to look at the textual issues with verses 22 and 23 of Jude, I want to kind of dive into and talk about um, really a lot of things that I have wrong with modern textual criticism and the things that go behind modern versions of the Bible. And for those of you who don't have much knowledge of these things, and maybe this is one of the first videos you've ever seen on this, or you're just, you know, you have your own view and you're coming at this different than me, that's fine. Just listen to what I have to say. Uh, argue with me in the comments below. Drop me a line saying, well, I think I would have said it this way. And, you know, I'm, I'm willing to have a discussion on this stuff. But for people with no knowledge of this, I really do believe that these can be helpful. So let's continue on here. As when we left off, we basically was reading the Cambridge Bible for Schools and Colleges commentary off of Bible Hub. And we I noted here that they were basically arguing against the King James view. Uh, you can see that the right side here kind of picks up right here. It's I took the pictures with my phone, so not a <laughs> not a pro video editor by any means, but yeah. Anyways, you can just see what these commentaries say, and I was pointing out how biased they are. You know, it, you know when they say those of more authority, and that's really one of the key issues, if you ask me, uh, about why they changed the King James. Why did they go from the King James to the modern versions now that you see, where the entire verses are gone and brackets are around everything, and entire words are gone from here and there? But what's going on? Well, you'll see in in this video, because guess what? It's the entire philosophy of older is better because we say so. And if you really, I'm gonna, I don't know which slide has it. Let me check here. Here it is. It was a few slides ago when I brought up the screenshot of the apparatus itself in regards to Jude. Now, note here, if you want to pause and look for your own and do your own type of study with this, you're more than welcome. If you don't have a this all on 28, then you unfortunately won't be able to go to the introduction and look up what all these different symbols may mean. And that's that's a huge hindrance if you're not familiar with it, because I'm pretty sure that they designed the thing to only be understood by, you know, the select few and not by the majority. That's for sure. They didn't make it easy to understand. Um, but anyways, it, this is verses 22 and 23 that's in question. And I want to go over verse 22 and look at really, I'm going to break this down for you. You say, Charles, I don't understand this. I don't get what those mean. Can you explain it in any way? Well, not as good as some people could, but I can't explain it in some ways. So first, let's look at this one right here. This is the King James reading in Greek, okay? And the textual information as cited on the, on the screen below there is P307-642-1175-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140-1140
Now the difference between a minuscule and an uncial is an uncial is written in all capital, capital letters and a minuscule is written in lowercase letters. Um, that's really the difference. The minuscules were later on. Uh, we're talking fourth, fifth, top, well, I'd say fourth, fifth, sixth century, something like that. It's when they become more prevalent. And early on, the uncials, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth century, or I guess you could say are uncials. So uncials tend to be older, minuscules later. And, you know, most of the minuscules are basically Byzantine. Almost all of them basically are Byzantine. And that really irks the modern textual critics because what that means is, the, in layman's terms, as time went on, basically all the manuscripts agree with the King James. But early on, they're all over the place. So the, the modern text critic like Bart Ehrman, who's an apostate a atheist, says, therefore, we can't know what the Bible is because early on there's such variation and later on there's agreement. And if we say that the early ones are the best ones, then who knows what the original one was because the earlier we go, the worse they get. And he demolished James White in a debate by bringing this point to, to rise. So if you adopt the modern textual critical view, in my opinion, you shouldn't trust the Bible. And that's why even people I know who, uh, well, I'll just say people I know have actually denied inerrancy directly to me on the Internet. They, in Facebook, I had messages and they say, you know, I don't believe anything we have is inerrant. And that's a, that's a result of this philosophy, you know, taking hold. Anyways, so we have four readings. Uh, if you went back on that apparatus and you look on verse 22, there are four readings. Uh, they're listed here. And I'm going to read the Greek because really I can't pronounce it in any coherent manner anyways. So there's the Greek. There's the there's the different uh, manuscripts or documents or, or uh, versions that have these readings. And I want to point out something to you here because it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> it's absolutely, it, you can't make this stuff up. The very top reading is the King James. The very bottom reading is what you see in modern versions other than the Dewey Reams. Um, or even the Dewey Reams, so maybe. I, I didn't really look into that one. I really just focused on the modern versions of the King James. But those top, the top one and the bottom one. The, the ones in the middle are not adopted. Uh, I actually wind up calling on the next slides the second one there. Um, I'm not going to try to say it. It's, it's, I'm, I'm wanting to, but I'm not. <laughs> the one that has A, C, 5, 33, 81, 436, etc. That one, those that, that, that reading is not used by anybody. And then the omitted one, the, this is attestation that the verse isn't even there. The words are not even there. The P72, the only papyri that we have doesn't even have it. That's earlier. Why is it not better? You see how it, so I want to point out to you just on this slide as, it, as it, I'm doing this off the cuff anyways. Notice if older is better and we're going with that philosophy, which I think stupid, then why not just omit the verse altogether? Because P72 doesn't have it. Oh, wait, no. Older's better when you want to begin, when you want to start with Sinaiticus of Vaticanus, right? Older's better then. See how it's, it's, it's hypocritical. It's contradictory. It's a made-up philosophy, and really it's just a bunch of men in ivory towers wanting to change your Bible. It's, it's, it's not consistent. And this is why I say, who's to say in 10 years or in 2 years, 20 years, someone don't come along and just say, you know what, this, this shouldn't even be in here. Let's omit it all together. Who's to say they won't do that? I see no reason why they wouldn't do that. Or who's to say they won't go with this one? Because look how much attestation that one has. It's, it's really, it's a crapshoot. It really is. Who knows? But I, I want to bring it to you like this. If you go to the next verse, and you're going to have to pause this and compare it and do your own study if you care enough to, to check this out. But notice how these different, these different texts, these different uh, manuscripts, they don't even agree in the very next verse. So you, in this one, Sinaiticus, I'll give you the example, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, right? That's Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. They read this, and the, and the, and the Nessel Allen says that's the reading for verse 22. In the very next verse, they don't even agree anymore. They don't even agree anymore, and the apparatus says, well, this is the verse. This and down here, this is the verse now. So I guess B is an authoritative. But wait, there's more. You, when you start looking back through these other ones, you, you start noticing that these other manuscripts, let's see, P1175, 
Um, uh oh, up here's P, 1175, 1448, 2492, Byzantine, 1448, 2492, 1175, P, oh, Byzantine. Oh, the King James reading, all of them except for one read, read identical. And the, um, the one is just that omission. You can argue that's a scribal error, right? Someone just forgot to you know write it in that one. But when you get to these other ones, when you get to Sinaiticus and B, and you get to, you know, um, the, these other manuscripts, 88, see here down here, that was a reading uh, that the Nessa Allen adopted in the text, 88. Well, 88 reads differently. And 1611, um, that read this way, that no one adopted this reading here in 1611, all of a sudden now, 1611 agrees with 88. So it's, it's all over the place is what I'm showing you. What, what I mean is, B and Sidiaticus disagree in the very next verse. 88 um, and, and, and 1611 agree in the very next verse, so they disagree. So 88 uh, disagrees with this uh, text in the next verse. Uh, so does uh, Sinaiticus. And if you look at the attestation here for these, a lot of the witnesses don't even show up again. Uh, I mean, 1243 all of a sudden agrees with C and... Um, and the, uh, whatever you call that, I have it in a later slide. But, I mean, just look. You're going to have to compare it for yourself. But see how C's up here? Um, and it agrees with this right here. The, uh, it's not the Syriac. What's it called? Um, the Harkin Lensics or whatever. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, just, just pause this on your own. I know this is getting convoluted for some people. But you just have to put this stuff together and begin to see what, I, what it looks like. And the long story short is, these readings are all over the place. So in verse 22, they, they say, okay, Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, C, which by the way is attesting to two at once. It's just hilarious. That means like a marginal or just something that's reading both of them. You know, they say that Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, Psi, C, 88, 442, 1243. We put that in the Nessa Allen text. We say that's the most authoritative reading. Modern Bible versions come alongside and say, yes, that is the reading. Well, the very next verse, those manuscripts are all over the place. They don't even agree with each other. There's differences in every one of them. You know, ones that disagreed entirely in the last verse now agree with the, the, the verse before. It's, it's all over the place. It's like, well, what happened here? If that's a reliable manuscript, why does it, differ with itself in, in just the one prior. You see what I'm saying? And this is why they, they're they not a family. That's why when you look at this, oh, Byzantine family, you know, it's a Byzantine reading. That's why it don't say Alexandrian, because they don't agree even in the next verse. They don't agree amongst themselves. They're all over the place. It'll read, you know, this, this text will read this way in this verse. In the next verse, it reads another way. And they just, it goes back and forth. It's all over the place is what I'm saying. Pause it, go back and look, compare the different manuscript reading. You'll see what I'm saying really quickly. And this is the second or third time that I have actually come across this and noticed that the Byzantine, the, T, the Texas Receptus, the TR reading is almost always consistent. You don't see the same thing uh, that you see all over the place. You know, the only difference here is we have 642 that, uh, that omitted Phobo or Fear. Um, here's another slide I made, uh, basically just breaking it down for you, because they want to say, oh, look at the attestation we have historically. Well, older's better because we say so. Well, the papyri, no one chose it. So that's that's hypocrisy. Secondly, if we break down how many of each they have, well, King James has one unseal, and the NA28 reading has four with one of them shared. Uh, minuscule readings, well, the King James has five plus Byzantine tradition. The Nesualan only has three. Uh, King James wins on that one, but we, we'll just ignore that. And uh, the nobody's reading is that reading that's the second one down that <laughs> no one ever chooses, right? The, then we go to the different versional support. They don't list any for the King James, unless you want to list the King James. When you go down to the Syriac, the Syri all extant Syriacs are omitted is what it says in the introduction, according to their symbol. But then they have the Hark Lenses version that's made by a guy in 616. In this, it is, they call it a Syriac version. They say, well, the Nessalan reading agrees with it. So, again, it's it's convoluted on purpose. I believe no one's supposed to understand this but them. But the long story short is, if you add these numbers up, it's pretty close if you ask me. Five minuscules versus three, King James wins. One versus four, you know, all right, congratulations. But they don't agree with each other in, the, in two verses that, can, uh, that go you know, right alongside each other. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to have to make another video. <laughs> so just hang with me.